Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in again for another episode in my channel, Andre Sabello. And today I'm going to be going over how to set up a Vue.js uh, toggle menu, uh, which is responsive for your website. Um, the menu that I'm going to be setting up today looks something like this. I have it on my personal website. So it, I only have two items, but as I have more, obviously, this is going to look better. Um, if I go and, and toggle on mobile, you will see that this nice looking menu pops up and uh, I'm going to tell you exactly where you can get uh, this burger menu CSS uh, code already done. Um, give credit to that and also I'm going to show you exactly when you click on this how to make this uh, sliding uh, effect just like you see over here. So we're going to start out by going into our playground. Uh, here's where I left out last week. So let me come over here. Actually, let me get this. There you go. That's better. And um, let's go and start at the beginning. So we need to set up some kind of menu. We are using Laravel. We are using Bootstrap 4 on this episode. Um, you don't have to use Bootstrap 4. I usually just do it because it's easy to set up. Um, and like, I don't have to set up all the CSS and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and maybe we can do it from scratch. Let me think about it. Mm, bootstrap or scratch bootstrap. Let's do it like with bootstrap four. So if you really like bootstrap four and you're, you're into it, you're really going to enjoy this, but you don't really have to use bootstrap. You can use anything else that, that you want to use or even like code up your own CSS for that matter. I just want to make this as short as possible so that you can get to it and see more like how the actual burger menu works and not really like CSS, you know. If you are interested, I can make another video where I show you how to do it with just plain CSS. Um, and this time I'm going to do it with Vue. Maybe on the next episode I can make something with React where I show you the differences and how that is done and I believe Vue is getting the composition API, so that's gonna be good. And because React already has it, and it's it's really awesome. And I, I can explain the differences and tell you exactly why. So here I'm gonna go find the nav bar. Here is my nav bar. Let me make sure this is recording. Yes, it is. Okay. So it, it's happened where I'm halfway through the video and it's, it's recording. It's not recording. So, okay, so we're here at the nav bar. We're gonna look at some examples. Um, I like this one. It's pretty standard bootstrap navigation. So if we go in here and then set up uh, our nav bar right here above that. Let's go look at it on the playground. Okay, so I have I have this right here. Or is this disabled copy coming from? There's probably some text I have in there. There you go. So I have this. Is this responsive already? Yes, it is. It already has this toggle menu. We're going to use another burger menu. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. As you see, this one is animated. And this one is not. You know, so it's pretty standard. All right. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to need is some kind of CSS that already has it. I'm not really like I know CSS I've been working with CSS for years, but not really at the point where I can do my own animations honestly So usually I look for them on the web and I look for um, where I can get these animations and Maybe tweak tweak them a little bit I'm better honestly with PHP and JavaScript and that kind of thing uh, CSS I know but not enough like this this right here is really good and I don't know if even if I knew how to do it at that point I will make it that good honestly so I'm just looking here for um, code that identifies that so I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like here let me bring this over here okay and um, all right burger right here so if you look at it this is exactly the same component we're going to be building from i'm just going to show you exactly how to do that and i'm just looking for the library where i got it from so burger menu 
burger burger bar maybe I'll just do that it's actually looking for burger bars <laughs> okay that's not what I'm looking for okay all right let me find this because burger menu CSS animation oh there it is tasty all right so this is thank you to John soup so amazing job by him and as you can see there are really some cool that's what this is what I'm telling you like even if I could probably sit for an entire day and figure it out you know and then know exactly how to do it but honestly these are so good looking and as you look I can you can see this one like that this is the one that I'm using right here so it, it's like it, it looks so good that honestly I don't want to change anything from it honestly so let's go and look at exactly what we need um we're gonna need for let's do the spin the spin menu so usage ah yeah maybe this one's a little bit complicated yeah I'll just show you from the one that I have so let me go back into this right here and I'm just gonna copy the CSS I'm gonna leave the CSS files in my blog so you can get them and also on my get personal git account so you can get them and know exactly how to do it um, so you can see I don't want to go through all the CSS honestly I can walk you through it but I'm not gonna do that all right now so let's go back into our playground and we're gonna be creating a component and this component is going to be called uh, burger so now we're going to get this burger uh, component and I'm going to drop this right in there so as you can see I'm already showing some errors and the reason why it's because I'm not using language properly so I'm using SCSS for this you can use CSS or SAS whatever your preference is and some of these variables have not been set yet so that's they're going to show me an error uh, what I usually do and as you see here is I actually have uh, theme variables where I already sh uh, set up like my primary colors and that kind of thing and that way uh, it can be consistent with the whole design of the website we don't have that right now so I'm just gonna copy some actually not copy but go in here and look at exactly what colors I need so I, I need this burger color and I'm just gonna set the variables right here and this is going to be maybe let's do something like uh, I don't know like some some kind of gray kind of black gray or maybe I can do 4-4 four, four. yeah 4-4 four, four. looks good and then already a burger color I'm gonna see where else I have um, so this primary color I see that right now it's uh, referring to some blue so let's see how that looks so if I do primary color and I do color like um, uh, let's just see blue and then here this is nice about PHP storm I can just find the color I want right here with a color picker it's gonna give me that so primary so now let's see if I have any more errors. Oh, I should be good. I have primary and burger color. So those are the colors we're going to be using. And let's start going through exactly what we're going to need. So in the setup that I have right here, I'm looking at it and like um maybe we don't need all of this, but I'll I'll just copy this and show you exactly how I did it that time. So div burger so that's gonna be your burger div and then we're gonna be adding some kind of toggling action so we need if I look back at that it's actually using a slot inside the slot the title is menu I don't honestly know exactly why I did it like that but I don't think we need a slot right now and then that's the button and the menu is gonna have this right here burger float right active um, okay yeah so we're gonna need some kind of um, 
dynamic way of us knowing if the menu is active or not and that's what actually gives it the effect of of being closed or open so right now it's active right now it's inactive and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be binding that to an action right here so I'm just gonna say active and I'm gonna have to set that up and I'm gonna do that on my data um, right here it's gonna be active is equals to false by default and another thing I saw that I had in there was toggle and actually click and it's gonna be toggle active so basically what this is gonna do is just gonna turn toggle on and off and this is giving me it's telling me is I'm not returning anything okay now if I go back into methods uh, actually like that um, and I'm gonna do toggle active what I'm gonna do in here is I'm just gonna uh, toggle the opposite of the active so when I click on it it's gonna toggle its opposite and that's basically this 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 actually is gonna be for like just a burger menu if you wanted to make this outside of of the actual burger menu itself you probably have to set it up as something else so if I look at it actually no I'm, I'm doing it right over here okay I see what's happening so I'm emitting an event where it's it's toggle opening the menu so um, what does that do so basically what this does is like it's gonna take this and emit an event to the parent uh, component and that is how the parent component is gonna know like hey this this menu is active or not active so it I could pass it as a prop, um, but I think, yeah, I think like, like this is good. Um, probably as a prop, I will save myself the time of having an additional active so I can see how I can make an improvement there where when I toggle this, I turn this active in the parent and then through the parent, I know uh, how that happens. So let's go back and do that as a prop. and. That's uh, just the way it is. Sometimes you, you make some tweaks and changes to the code you originally had, and that's totally fine. So I'm going to do this. I like to be very um, strict about this. So if I'm going to use a Boolean, I just go and say, hey, this type is Boolean. I think that when you have types and you you code with types, it's, it's easier to catch errors. Whereas if you don't, it's not that easy. Like you will have to like do some checks to see what kind of type it is. And like an example of that can be like maybe in here you pass a string instead of true or false, you know. So um, maybe the code that I'm trying to get in here is looking for, hey, is this true or false? You know, like right here, this is saying, is this active true or false? And if this is a string, it may not give it to me like that. Or if, if you write something else, it's not going to give it to me like that. So if, I, if you write like, hello, it's not going to think like it is true or false, you know, for that matter. So if if you pass, if you if you are strict about this, then you, you avoid a lot of errors. You're going to get an error saying, hey, you need to pass a Boolean, which is more of an easier bug to catch, you know. And then we're going to do the default it's going to be false and I'm also going to make it required required by default is false in this case I make it true if you were just if you didn't have it required you don't need to do uh, re required false you know that's overkill because it already by default is like that so you can just say in this case default is required is true so now I'm saying okay this 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 cannot be done because at this point it's a property and it's not data so you cannot change properties in the child component you can emit an event where the parent is going to get this toggle menu and uh, I believe it's right here so instead of over there I'm just going to put this right here instead of using the bootstrap toggler I'm basically using our own toggler and I'm going to say at toggle menu that's how I catch the event what happens so probably active you know becomes not active and I'm gonna have to set these variables up in the parent which at this point is the instance of view 